Hello everyone at Mass Movement. Uh, my name is Evan Jacobs and I run a independent film company, a distribution company, I guess digital distribution company called Anadinia Films On Demand. And we have a new movie coming out called Death Toilet starring Mike Hartsfield who runs New Age Records. He was an outspoken Drift Again. And um, Isaac Golub, singer of Chorus of Disapproval, A18, he has a new uh, project he's doing called Count Catastrophic. And uh, basically, I just wanted to come on here, talk a little bit, a little bit at the beginning about Death Toilet and um, Anadinia Films. We're, we're a small company. Um, we've been around since 1995. Distributed movies, got them into video stores. Um, you know, and, and then the video stores kind of went away. We've gotten stuff on digital platforms, Amazon Prime, um, um, I, you know, Com, Comcast, and also I um, do a Vimeo page for all of the Anadinia films where you can watch them all for very, very little money called Anadinia Films On Demand. I would like to thank Tim and everyone at Mass Movement for letting me do this piece. I'm now going to talk about the 10 um, things, or it's, just, it's basically books and movies that have influenced me and helped me become the creator that I've become. Number one would have to be the book The Outsiders, written by S.C. Hinton. I uh, do a lot of writing. If you look at the bookshelf over there, you'll see that I have a lot of books, um, some that I've self-published, some that I've been lucky enough to have published by a publisher in, um, in Orange County, California called Saddleback Publishing. There's just this story about friendship, about togetherness. You know, if you come from the hardcore scene or the punk scene and whatnot, there's just a lot there that parallels it. And just, you know, the, the things that are dealt with in the story, you know, you have these really tough guys and amidst all the tough guys, the center of it, the core is this deep sensitivity, which is shown by the characters of Ponyboy and Johnny. And I just always gravitated towards that. And maybe, you know, I've felt like an outsider in my life. You know, there's times that I do, there's times that I don't. I think we all have those feelings. And basically this was just one of the books that I was just like, or one of the things, if I, if I could take one thing to a desert island, it would be this book. Number two on the list of, uh, of, of things that have helped to find me or help make me the creator that I am is the movie Phantasm. This movie, you know, to, you know, just the face of it looks like a, just a, you know, horror movie, you know, and, and some people can dismiss that because of that. This film is a very psychological, a meditative look at death, and it's so interesting and can be looked at in so many ways and has so many different, you know, angles with which to attack it. It's, it's just a cut above so many other horror movies and just the whole series, you know, all five movies. Well, I, I don't think that they're all as good as the original Phantasm. The first Phantasm is a tremendously well-made, well-put-together film. And, it, you know, really, if you've dealt with loss in life, as I have, I lost my mother and I lost my father. I mean, I've lost other people, too, but, you know, losing the parents is uh, different. Um, this movie, also the main character in this movie has lost their parents. It's, it's just such a special, such a... Um, interesting film and it really does look at the idea of how we deal with death and what we do with people when they are no longer with us, at least in the physical sense. Number three for the things that have influenced me as a creator, I gotta go with That Was Then, This Is Now by S.C. E. Hinton. Yet again, another S.C. E. Hinton book. That woman is a giant to me. She just wrote and writes in such a way that those characters have resonated with me my whole life. I still read these books. I think they're very important. I never read anything like these books and I still haven't. And you know, there's some people that you know have told me, oh, you know, you know that those are juvenile books and that's fine. That's fine. I love juvenile books. I would rather read juvenile books personally. You know, you give me the R.L. Stein type books where, you know, you have young people in high school, middle school, elementary school, and they're dealing with problems. They have to figure them out on their own. I am there all day for that, which is why I have written a bunch of books myself. Uh, this is just one of them, Skinhead Birdie. Um, it's, uh, it's about the punk rock scene, blurred, blurred reality, kind of a virtual reality, augmented reality book. Uh, book called Instafamous, dealing with the perils of, you know, YouTube and Instagram and Snapchat and sort of the Instafamous nature of those, of those things. But all of those things, and I've written a lot of books. I've written, I want to say, 50 or more books. All of it goes back to That Was Then, This Is Now, and The, and the Outsiders, text, the books of S.E. Hinton. I just cannot get enough of them. 
The next film that really helped shape my life and shape who I am is uh, the uh, film Rumblefish by Francis Ford Coppola, based on yet another S.C. Hinton book. Um, there's just something about this movie. I really, really relate to it. I love it. I, I think what it says about the bonds we form with people when we're young and the things that we think about people and the way that we sort of um, mythify people and how, you know, the older we get, a lot of our myths, a lot of our heroes are shattered before us. And just, you know, but, you know, and, and then what do you do when the heroes don't really want to be the heroes anymore? Maybe they never were the heroes. Just a great film. Francis Ford Coppola was, it was just a bold, daring, well put together movie based on that book. And he's so faithful to it. And the best thing about this release is that it shows a lot of the deleted scenes in which he shot scenes from the book that never made it into the movie. A terrific film. The next book that really helped shape who I am is the Roger Corman book, uh, How I Made a Hundred Movies in Hollywood and Never Lost a Dime. As you can see by how much I've read it, it's kind of falling apart. It's taped at the edges. I read and reread this thing constantly. It's so inspiring just because, you know, there's one line in the book that really sums up who Roger Corman is for me, where he says, um, you know, he, he wrote this script, the movie got made, he thought that it was, you know, he thought that the movie was terrible, but the movie actually did okay, and, you know, he, he said that he realized at that moment that there, are, that there are very few great successes and very few total failures. And that's the way that I look at, f at filmmaking, at writing, and all that stuff. You know, there are just people that labor on one thing. That's like what Stanley Kubrick did, you know, with labor on one thing. And I'm not like that. And, and, and I want to say, you know, I, I think a lot of it is because I'm lazy. I think maybe my interest, I just can't hold it like that. But I like making a lot of things. I like just putting stuff out there and just seeing what happens with it. And, and for me, it's the doing. And that is why I just, I love Roger Corman. I love um, what he did with cinema and how he just made stuff. And, you know, what might be someone's favorite movie is a movie that somebody else hated. So I just, I just really, really, really am inspired by him, his body of work, and that book. Next up for me would have to be, well, obviously John Cassavetes is a filmmaker, super inspiration. Um, but his movie, The Killing of a Chinese Bookie, just what that movie represents. You know, a lot of people say that that in the film, the bookie represents the artist and um, having to deal with like money people and how he's so beholden to these money people and, and, and just how, you know, people want to create things and they just want to be able to exist. But, you know, you need money to do that. And, and John Cassavetes, you know, in a lot of ways and kind of, you know, not in a lot of ways represented that. But... His spirit, his desire, his drive, what he was trying to put across, his things, you, you, you can't really call that into question. You know, his movies are flawed, he was flawed, and Killing of a Chinese Book, he just so represents that and is such, a, is such just a rich character study on somebody that just wants to do the thing that he loves but kind of needs financial means to be able to do it and how do you exist in that world that's what killing of a chinese book he represents to me and why i'm so inspired by it the uh next um book or thing that uh really uh, inspired me and helped me be you know the person and creator that i am would be uh this book by melvin van peebles on the about the making of his book sweet sweet packs badass song this man is someone who just, I don't want to say never cared about what other people thought. He just ultimately couldn't be anybody but himself, nor did he ever want to be. It was never an idea. It was never, it was never even a thought in his, in his mind. And who he is and what he represents inspires me so much. And the movie that his son made, Badass, Mel, uh, Melvin Van Peebles has, has a son, Mario. He made a movie called Badass that was just really captured his father's story. And I just, I, I, I read this to get inspiration. Usually when I'm editing a project, I'll just kind of read a little bit each day before I start editing. And it just, it, it, it makes me feel good. and it, it gets me energized. And this is certainly... A seminal book for me. I reread it like I reread the Roger Corman book. The next uh, movie 
that uh, really helped play a role in making me, you know, the creator, artist, whatever I am, would be Thief by Michael Mann. Um, this movie is just a brilliant character study about somebody who lives by a code. They're not going to break that code and they will live by that code at all costs. And James Caan is just perfect in it. Michael Mann's direction is terrific. The, uh, the uh, um, audio commentary on this movie is, it's Michael Mann, when you listen to him talk, you realize he speaks another language. I don't always understand the language. It doesn't matter. Usually the movie that results is something that is at the very least interesting. And that is what grabs me. And don't get me wrong, I love big budget movies. I love funny, you know, silly movies. I love it all. But when I really think about things that are important to me that were, you know, movies, Thief is, is very, very big and very, very important to me. The next uh, book would be um, Whom God Wants to Destroy. It's a book about the career of Francis Ford Coppola or most of the career of Francis Ford Coppola. And the thing that I love about him or that I think is interesting about him is he really didn't want to make The Godfather. It, 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 and it, it was, it was um, well, actually, I shouldn't say that he didn't want to make it. He, the success of The Godfather. He was going in a different direction as a filmmaker, kind of you know, more arty. He was given The Godfather and he really came up with a very interesting way to make it, kind of looking at the times that he was living in, the Nixon administration, and kind of built the family around that. That changed the trajectory of his career and gave him a career he maybe would never have had doing art films. But then he tried to bring that artistic sensibility into his other films, and this book really clearly breaks all that down. And he was such an innovator with sound, such an innovator with editing, such an innovator with so many things. And, you know, and, and, and like he says, you know, in the commentary for Rumblefish, he, he talks about, you know, innovation and, and so many people say, you know, you can't do this and you can't do that. And he's all, you know, if you don't break the rules, you, you, you don't know what you can do. I'm paraphrasing. But this book, very, very important, very, very seminal to me. And one of those things that I think about often when I think about why I want to create things. And the final film that made me the filmmaker creator that I am today would have to be Who's That Knocking at My Door by Martin Scorsese. This was the first film that he ever made. I believe he made it when he was at NYU Film School. And it's the kind of movie, you know, he was very inspired by John Cassavetes. So that's, you know, how this film kind of kind of came to be. And um, I remember I was at a point in my life where I just didn't feel like I had a control of a lot of things. I liked a girl, she didn't like me. Um, I, I didn't know if I wanted to do my record label Ringside Records anymore. There was just a lot going on. And I remember saying to myself, you know, like, like do something with this. And, you know, I just thought about it and I was like, well, what do I love? I love screenwriting. And I was like, well, you know, I do want to make movies. I want to see my f screenplays that I'm writing turned into movies. So I made my first film, Walking Between the Raindrops, which is super inspired by Who's That Knocking at My Door. I mean, I even shot scenes that were like imitations. I, I don't know where they are now, and I'd actually like to release them, because we shot like a whole other movie while we were making the movie to kind of have like these extra scenes that were all inspired by Who's That Knocking at My Door that ultimately didn't make it into the film. But there's just something about this movie, something about what Martin Scorsese did, something about the subject matter, and it inspired me, it still does, and you know, I'm sort of like him. He says all his life he's been bouncing between John Cassavetti's Shadows and Citizen Kane by Orson Welles. For me, I've been bouncing between Who's Out Knocking at My Door and the films of Roger Corman. So I've stayed pretty low budget and I wouldn't have it any other way.